All right guys, who is ready to prep for cycle three? It is that time of year and I am here again to make a video for you of all the things that I have prepped to try to make it easier for you as you get started. So first of all, hi, my name is Caitlin. I am obviously a CC mom. I'm a mom of four and we are headed into our fifth year homeschooling with CC homeschooling in general, but also homeschooling with CC. So we will be repeating cycle three again. We've got, gone through it once. Uh, we started CC when my oldest was five. So for his kindergarten year, he is now nine and I have a seven-year-old. And then I also have a four-year-old who will be starting her first year in CC this year. And then I have a two-year-old. Um, so I'm going to be sharing what all I've done to prepare for them uh, for foundations for this year. Now, you noticed I said I have a nine-year-old. Yes, this is going to be our first year in essentials. And yes, I will be doing a video like this for essentials. Look for that next week um, or later this week. But I, that one will be very much a, hey, this is my first year. I don't know what I'm doing, but here's what I've prepared. Um, so that one be a little bit different. But this one is a, we've been doing this for a lot of years. This is what I do for myself and to help you guys. So anyway, um, just as a quick little like introduction reminder thing. If you have watched these videos that I've done in the past, the first half of this video is going to be repeat for you. So you can go ahead and, you know, skip on if you're just here to see what worksheets and activities I'm doing this year. Um, go ahead and skip on. I will have that timestamp in the uh, description box or the first comment, something like that, so that you can skip on if you would like to. Um, if you are not a veteran CC parent, if you are new here, um, then you're gonna wanna watch this whole thing. In fact, you might need to stop, depending on how new you are, and go watch my video that explains classical conversations. So if you are like so, so brand new, you don't know really what any, what CC is, you've just like, you've joined and you're totally fresh, I recommend exiting out of this video, go watch my other one that explains classical conversations, how it works, like what a community day looks like, the theory behind it, all that kind of thing, so that you can then come back and watch this video. As you prep for this upcoming year, you kind of know like why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. Um, so if you're brand new, go check that out. Once you've done that, come back here. And one other thing before we get started, I will link absolutely everything that I can link that I talk about today. Um, thankfully, so when I first started making these videos several years ago, we had CC Connected, which is a file sharing type thing, and you could not link. And so I had to just say, this is what I found, and this is the name of the creator, and y'all had to just go search for it. Now I can link directly to stuff, which is wonderful. So I will link to everything, anything that I talk about today. Um, however, last year I ran out of space in the YouTube description box because I had so many links to share with you guys. And so I ended up having to put some of them in like a Google document type thing. Um, so if that happens this year, and it probably will because of a lot of links, I have put a post on my blog that has unlimited amounts of space. So I can put all the links. So go check that out. It's got everything you could look for, want. It's going to be on my blog. And also at least some of the links, if not all of them, will be in the YouTube description themselves. So you don't have to go to a separate location to look for stuff. Because I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. But also YouTube only allows me like... 5,000 characters or something and that last year I maxed it out. So anyway, all right, that's my introduction, housekeeping stuff. Let's get started. Okay, first of all, what do you have to have to do Classical Conversations Foundations? Two things, a guide and a tin whistle, okay? That's it. If you have those two things, you can do CC. That's like the most basic pared down um, option, but you can do it that way. So that's all. Um, I'm going to give you a million other options of things that you can do if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, so this is found on CC's website, um, in their bookstore. It's the foundations guide. This covers all three cycles. So once you buy it once, you should not have to buy it again unless like they update it or something, um, which hopefully they will not do anytime soon. But it's just a one-time purchase for all three cycles. The Tin Whistle, they have one on the CC website. I have purchased ours from Amazon and... I don't know. I like these. Um, I'll link them, but there's a lot of options for tin whistles. So you need those two things. Some things that are good to have personally. I really like these uh, geography trivium tables. So you can buy these placemats or you can buy these folded up ones, which are called the trivium tables. Um, and they have all the geography for the year for that cycle and they're dry erase. 
sort of. They actually are terrible at erasing, so, <laughs> um, but they're theoretically dry erase. So t a tip is to use rubbing alcohol to clean these off. So every couple weeks I take them and I clean them with rubbing alcohol because the dry erase marker, it stains really badly, but the, dry, the alcohol gets them off. Anyway, that is not the point of this video, just a little tip for you. But I like having these, especially these smaller sizes because they can fit in backpacks. They don't take up a lot of storage space in our schoolroom. You know, we can slide them in the pocket of a folder, whatever. Um, but our community does a map challenge every year. My kids really love that and they love maps in general. And so they enjoy tracing the maps at home. And so I have these for all the kids. Another thing from the bookstore that I like are the timeline cards. Um, again, not a must have, but they are fun to have. So those look like this. And there's one card for every um, event on the timeline. So there's a picture on the front and put myself this thing on the, you know, like it tells you what timeline event it is. And then on the back, there's more information so you can read about it. Now, on the website, there are four sets of timeline cards and you have to purchase all of them to get the full timeline. Once you've bought that, you don't have to buy them again because the timeline stays the same every single cycle, every single year. So it's a one-time purchase, but it's all four of them together. I don't know why they package them in four instead of selling it as one because you need all of them. Um, but that's how they have them um, on the website. Because every year I see people be like, okay, this is cycle three. So which of these timeline packs do I need? All of them, because we do the timeline every single year. So it doesn't necessarily go with the cycle. Um, so the timeline cards are great. They're beautiful. You know, you can hang them up in your school room and you get that like lovely aesthetic look. Um, they're nice to have to read. They're not a must have, they are quite expensive. And if you're on a budget, or you don't wanna store stuff, or your kids are very little and they can't read, you know, you don't have to have these. It's really, it's okay. It's okay if you don't have them, um, but if you want them, they are nice and they're lovely and they help you expand on the timeline. So they're great, but don't feel like you have to get them is what I'm trying to say about that, okay? Um, another thing from the bookstore that you might want, I've not purchased these myself, but you might want them, are the Memory Work CDs. So all the Memory Work is on CDs. Um, some of them have songs, some of them do not, and it's just someone saying them, but they're nice to listen to in the car if you have a CD player. See, I don't have a CD player in my van, so they don't work for me and we don't own a CD player in my house, and so I've never purchased them, but if you have a CD player, that might be a good option for you. There's also digital versions, which I'll talk about in a second, but um, I just wanted to throw that out there that there are CDs if that's something that you would like. Now, let's talk a little bit about organizing and storing these resources that I just, just mentioned. First is the foundations guide. You can see that mine has tabs three different colors because three different cycles. I did this my first year. The first year I was like really overwhelmed. I had no idea what all this stuff meant in this guide. And I saw someone else tab their guide and I was like, ooh, that's a good idea, I'll do that. So I tabbed it. You know, it's fine. It's nice when I need to, to find something, I can find it quickly because of my tabs. I do use them some, but it's also not super necessary. Um, you know, if you are like me and you love to organize all the things and you like happy color polka dot, you know, all that stuff and you want to do it, go for it. But don't feel like it's something that you have to do and think, oh, she has hers tabbed. I need to do that because I'm going to use it all the time. Honestly, I don't actually use this book that often. It sits at home on my shelf as a reference guide. I do pull it out from time to time, but I do not like carry this to community day with me. Um, I don't use it every day as we're doing our memory work. I have other pared down sets of memory work that I use for that. For community day, I have ever since started CC had either a baby or a toddler with me and my arms full and I don't, I carry as little amount of stuff as possible. So when we're there, I just put stuff on my phone. If I want to remember things then I can come back and put it in my other memory work notes that I'll show you later. So anyway, the tabs are fine. If you want to see how I tabbed it exactly, I put that in a different video. I'm going to link it. It's like eight minutes in. That way you can go and you can see where I showed exactly which pages I tabbed, but not a, not a mess tab, just a, just a nice to have. Another thing is for the first time this year, we are going to have tin whistle cases. Okay. So you have this nice little tin whistle. It is a good idea to have something to put it in. Now, is it necessarily? No, because guess what? We've been doing CC for four years and we've never had any sort of case. Um, one of my kids puts his and his backpack in a Ziploc bag and the other puts his and his backpack in the tube that it came in from Amazon. So like, 
you know, it's okay if you don't have a case, but it is nice. And this year I am going to make cases. I sew, I quilt, so um, I found a pattern online and I'm going to make one. If you do not sew or quilt, there are some beautiful ones on Etsy. They're really high quality. There's a lot of colors. They're made by a fellow CC mom and not very expensive. So grab one of those. That way you can put your kids' tin whistles in it. It protects it in the backpack. You know, it's like the little mouthpiece isn't rolling all around and where it's gross and stuff. So it's something that obviously you don't have to have one because it's been four years and we have it, but it's nice to have. So I'll link that. And then for the timeline cards, how are you going to store them? That is a very personal preference and a very, I don't know if controversial is the right word, but people have strong opinions about it. I use this box. This particular box came from Hobby Lobby years ago, the first year we did CC. I can't link it. I don't even know if they have it in stores anymore. Um, but there's all sorts, it's a Sterilite brand. There's all sorts of little boxes like this. Um, as long as it will fit a large stack of five by eight cards, cause these are five by eight, it will fit your timeline cards. Some people put them in little baskets. Some people put them in like those like really soft cloth baskets. Some people put punch holes on them holes in them and put them on a ring. Um, people put, do them a variety of ways. Uh, some people put them in binders and like little page protectors. That is a very expensive storage option, but some people love that. So really I say whatever is going to help you use them the most is the best option for you. For us, I keep them in this box and I have another video where I showed a, a bunch of box options. Like I went around my house and got a whole bunch of different containers and um, I'll link that so you can go see some of the other things that they would fit in if that helps you. Um, but I use this one and then I have these little dividers. Um, I got them from Amazon. There are 30, 31 of them. I don't know. You only need 24 for the timeline card. So I have a couple extra dividers at the back, which is good um, if you end up getting like there's some other cards, science cards and maybe like artists and composers. I don't have any of those. But if you have some of the other CC cards, they can go back there. I keep additional flashcards that I'm going to show you in a minute in the back. So I just keep mine divided by week. So when it's week one, I pull the seven cards to go with week one. I display them on our thingy. I'll talk about that in a minute, how I display them. And then I put them back in and I get week twos out. So that is one way to keep them organized. I will say having them like this is nice for when I'm getting them out to put them on display. It's not so good for my kids just rifling through them. And I'm considering this year taking them out of the box and putting them all jumbled up in something and hoping that maybe me letting go of my desire to keep everything organized and perfect will make it where my kids look at them more often because after all, isn't that the point of why I bought the timeline cards? Now that my kids are old enough to read, my, my older two are old enough to read, I really would rather them read them and use them than us just display them in a beautiful, you know, thing across the board. So that may be changing this year, but for now that is how I have them stored. Okay, next let's talk about digital resources. So CC has an app um, for each cycle. So you can go, I think, I know they have iTunes because that's what I have an iPhone, but I think Android also has an app. I mean, I know they have an iPhone app and I think they also have an Android app. Um, so you can go, you can download it, it's $10. Um, it's okay. It's got the memory work on it. So that's what I use it for. We pull up, you know, each week's history and listen to that, Latin, listen to that, whatever. Uh, it's kind of clunky. I don't love the interface of the app. It doesn't have the timeline song, which is annoying to me. I wish it had the timeline song because that's the one thing that's not on there. I don't know why they don't put it on there, but anyway, um, it is nice to have. Also the presidents get updated on the app. So if you bought CDs, like when we first started CC, president Trump was president. And so the, uh, digital songs that I downloaded, the president song goes through him. And then of course, president Biden was elected. Um, and so I didn't want to rebuy the whole seat, uh, the digital file that I had. So anyway, the app refreshes or gets updated or whatever. So the correct amount of presidents is on there. So anyway, um, it's nice. It's nice. There's also, like I've mentioned, digital files on iTunes. So you can go and you can purchase the three CDs that I talked about. You can purchase those as digital files. One has the memory work by week. So it has like week one and all its memory work, week two, so on. The other has the memory work by uh, subjects. So you can listen to all the history in a row, all the Latin in a row. And then the third one has like all the extra songs, like the timeline, the president's song, uh, the orchestra song, some stuff like that. So when I bought it, I just bought, I bought the app and then I bought the one 
disc, I know it's not a disc, it's on line album, whatever, um, that had the timeline on it because I wanted the timeline song. You can't buy it by itself and you, it's not in the app. So now it is, all the memory work, including the timeline song, is in CC Connected. So let's talk about that. CC Connected is an online resource that is available to you if you are doing CC in a community. So you've paid tuition to CC. You're not just doing this on your own at home. I know there's some people that do it at, at home on their own, but um, I, I believe it's only for people who are in a community. Um, but once you have, ac have access to that, CC Connected has um, resources that CC has put out, additional supplemental stuff. All the memory work is on there. There's file sharing. There's a forum for parents. Um, so the memory work is there. So if you want to, you don't have to get the app or the CDs slash iTunes albums. Um, the only thing is you have to log in and, and, you know, navigate through several steps to find it. Every time you want to use it, you would have to be, you know, have internet access to use it. So it's kind of personal preference on what is going to be easiest for you. Do you want the CDs? Do you want the digital albums? Do you want the app? Do you just want to use the memory work that's already provided for you on CC Connected? Or a combination like I do so um, so think about that um, all right so those are like resources that CC provides things like that now we're gonna move on to some things that that are like outside of those things before we do that I just want to take a second and let you know you do not have to do all of this stuff. I'm about to share a lot of resources. Some that I'm using myself, some that I've used in the past, but I'm not using this year. Some that I'm not, haven't even used, but I've seen and I think they're great. They're just not age appropriate for my kids, that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna share like a water hose of information. Pick and choose what works for you. Take the things that you like, leave the things that you don't, don't let it overwhelm you. Um, I'm just trying to give you options and set you up for the easiest prep that you can have, okay? All right, so let's see here. I've got notes in front of me to make sure that I stay on track and try to find all the things. Okie doke. So I mentioned that I do not carry this guide around. I don't use it every day for our memory work. It is a reference book um, that I keep on our school shelf. So how do I have all the memory work? Well, there are some amazing parents out there who have created a bunch of different resources and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite ones. All right, so there are three main ways that people like to display their memory work at home or um, keep their memory work together so it's all accessible. So the first one is what people call fridge facts. Fridge is in refrigerator. The idea of it came from you hang this on your fridge and you look at it throughout the day. So um, these are eight and a half by 11. Each one has a whole week of memory work on it. And there's one for every single week. Um, some people put them in like page protectors. I laminated mine, hole punched and put these little rings on it. And I laminated them front back. So we have like week one and then there's week two, week three. Um, and I hang them up in our schoolroom so that the kids can see them. Um, but they can also take them off the little hooks and take them, you know, to look at them if they're working on a worksheet or they just want to look at it for fun or whatever. Um, some people put these in their bathrooms so that their kids see them every time they go to use the bathroom or just wherever is convenient for you. Um, if you have a small space, this is a really good way to display all of the memory work at once and it's all on one page, okay? Um, I've linked some. There are two versions as of right now on CC Connected. And here... I'm going to pause for a second. Um, CC Connected was wiped last week. So I was planning to do this, this video last weekend. I'd already pulled out my links and I you know, made my outline or whatever. And then they took everything down off CC Connected. And they um, have been uploading, re-uploading everything this week. I don't know why they're cleaning it up or something. But anyway, that really delayed me because I didn't have any links. And I didn't know what they were going to put back. And so that is why this video is so late getting out. And I apologize for that. Um, but anyway, at the time that I'm uploading this video, I don't even know that they're done putting all of the stuff back on. I've been every single day combing through to see what they added each day and they've been adding every day. It's now the weekend, so I'm sure they're taking a break off, you know, with, um, on the weekend, not working. So I don't know if they're going to add more um, this coming week. And if they do and I see great stuff, I'll come back. I can't obviously edit the video at that point. Um, I'll already have posted it, I hope. But I'll add stuff in the comments or in that blog post that I mentioned if I see other great stuff. So anyway, as of right now, this uh, file is on there and there's another one that's very similar, just a little bit, you know, like 
basically your aesthetic, what do you like, what is visually pleasing to your eye. I'll link both of those. If you're not on CC Connected, there is a Fridge Facts file that someone put in a, um, like a Dropbox folder or some Google file, something like that, that I will share. It is, um, it's, it's there and you can check it out and see, you know, if you want to use that one. So I'll put that there. All right. Another way that people like to keep their memory work is in a flip book. So a flip book, smaller, obviously this is four by five, like pictures. And there's different versions of these. The one I have has the map here and then I, there's week one's memory work. And then you flip it up and then there's a map for week two and week two's memory work. So, um, this is one that goes by week. And then there's some files that you can get. It's the same idea, but it goes by subject. So like here's all the history. Here's all the science, science, science. So it kind of depends. This is actually last year's. I have not done this for cycle three with the one that has them all in order. We didn't use it a ton last year. And so I haven't decided if I'm gonna make this for this upcoming year or if I just wanna stick with my one that has them by week. I like the by week better. Um, Anyway, but I wanted to show you this one that it's by, by subject. So these go in four by six photo albums um, and the specific number of pages that you need. So these photo albums come from Dollar Trees. They're just a dollar or actually now, now $1.25 so they've increased their prices, but it's the exact perfect size. So if you have a Dollar Tree, go and grab you some of these. If you don't have a Dollar Tree, there's a set on Amazon sold by a CC parent who actually makes some of the flipbook files. She also has the uh, albums on Amazon that you can purchase that are the exact perfect amount of pages for CC families. So that's a good option if you don't have a Dollar Tree near you. It's a little more expensive, but sometimes if you don't have the options, that's fine. Um, but anyway, so as far as the files for the flipbooks, this is the one thing that they have not put back on CC Connected. Um, there are flipbook files on CC Connected, which I will link to. But as of right now, when I'm making this video, they are all, you have to print them out and cut each rectangle yourself and slide them in the book, which is not a huge deal. That's fine. That's what I did with the, um, the ones that are by subject last year. And it was not a huge deal. However, what I've always done in the past is there was this one particular person who made them into JPEG files. So you could just send them to wherever you like to order pictures, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Amazon photo, whatever. And then they would print them off. It was about $5 and they would mail them to you. And then you just slid them into the photo album because they were the size of pictures. And that was so convenient. And I loved it. Those have not been re-added to CC Connected yet. So I'm going to keep an eye out for it. And I'm going to definitely put that in the description or in my blog post or both. Um, once I see those, if they are ever put back or if they'll allow someone to upload them or whatever. Um, but so that's my preference is to download the one that has the JPEG file. So I can just send them to, I usually get mine from Amazon, like I said, but from wherever you get your pictures printed and they print it and they send it back to you or you pick them up and then it's done and you don't have to cut anything. But if for whatever reason, that's not an option anymore, you can just print them out on cardstock, cut them out, you know, put on your favorite TV show and, or have your kids cut it out. And it's not a huge deal. So anyway, those are flip books. These are really nice for keeping in the car, for tossing in a backpack, for travel. Um, they don't have any pretty pictures or anything other than the map, but they don't have pictures like the fridge facts have a few pictures with them, um, but they are good and convenient for on the go. All right, the last option, or the last really popular option, is uh, what's called trifold board. So originally these were created by someone who put them on one of those trifold, you know, like cardboard board, display board type things. Um, but I use them on my wall and that's what other people do too. But in like all the files, or if you read about them in the, um, connect C the CC Facebook group, they will be referenced as the trifold board pages. And so at our previous house, we had a wall in our dining room, which was also our school room. And I had this big, nice display with our memory work and I hung those up. Um, at our current house, we have um, a, a really open floor plan and a lot of windows, which I love both of those things, but it does not leave much wall space for anything really. And so most of our schoolroom wall is now like the whiteboard and the bookshelves and I don't have a big area to put the memory work. So I have not put these back up 
on our um, wall since we moved. Um, but what they are, and I'm gonna insert some footage from our old house, is um, each each week is um, each each week each well that's the Bible which I won't show you that one. CC does have Bible memory work that is not in the guide and it's not taught at Community Day. If you want to add that into your at home, you can, and there's files for it, which I have, um, but it's confusing to people. They're like, wait, what? There's Bible memory work I'm supposed to do? No, it's just like a supplemental thing they made for people who want. Anyway, that's why I had it in there. Okay, so like here is Geography Week 1. It has the geography. It's on one eight and a half by 11. So I have eight of you. Well, you can do six or you can do eight. I have eight. Um, that because that's I included the Bible and fine arts um, so it's up to you but anyway you have these on your wall so it does take up a little bit more space but it is nice because it's really big and very visual um, my kids loved these our especially our very first year when my oldest was five and then my three-year-old was you know like really invested in CC too he wanted to do it also um, here's an example of like the science one so anyway these are really nice if you want a big display board at home. And I would at some point like to figure out where to put these in my house because I do miss having them up. I thought they were just really big and visual and a lot more eye catching than this little guy, even though it's convenient and portable. So, and we've got my memory work wall here. So at the top, I put the week's timeline cards, the clips, the command hook clips are linked in the description and the little hooks that I use for down here are linked in the description. These files are all from the same person oh. on CC Connected. I'll put that in the description, but I just print those off and put them in page protectors. So they are in the shiny page protectors. I put one week and then another week on the back. So I have week one, flip it around, week two, and then after week two, I take it down and put up weeks three, four, five, six. In a notebook like this. So I have Bible, I have geography, history, science and so each week I just pull out the next weeks if I need to and then put you know put one back and they're already all ready to go and then I have each cycles stored in a binder so that they're ready for when we go through the cycle again um so when I did the trifold boards thingy the memory work wall that I had I also had seven of these little command hook clips across across the top which is where I put our timeline cards um, when we moved and I didn't put that whole set up, up again, I did want to display my timeline card. So now I have them, um, on this beaded garland, I guess the garland is the right word with these little wooden clothespins and I have it hanging over our whiteboard and it's cute. Um, and so I hang the cards up for display up there. I got mine from Hobby Lobby last year. So I don't know if it's still there, but if you have a Hobby Lobby near you, you can go check. If you don't, I found one on Etsy that is perfect, actually more perfect than mine because mine has eight clips and there's only seven timeline cards per week. So it kind of bothers me that it's not symmetrical, but this one, the one on Etsy has seven clips. So it's perfect for your seven timeline cards. So I'll link that in case you want to do what I've done with my timeline cards and put them up in your school room or wherever, something like that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about worksheets. So at this point, the veteran moms, it's time for you to hop back in because this is where um, I talk about the stuff that's kind of new every year. All the stuff I talked about, I kind of repeat every year. This is the new stuff. So welcome back, everybody. Um, okay, so if you've watched my videos in the past, you recognize this box. This is how in the past I have stored my kids' worksheets. So what I would do is in the summer when I'm prepping, I find the worksheets that I want and I go ahead and I print all 24 weeks of them. And then I punch holes in them so they're already punched. And I put them in this file box and every week has a hanging folder. And so week one, week two, week three, whatever. So then after we would go to our community day for that week, we would come home, I could pull the worksheets for week one, put them in my kids' binders. My kids had three wing binders with uh, five tabs, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I would kind of separate them out and give them a couple worksheets for each day. So that is what I've done in the past. This year I'm doing things a little bit different. Um, so for one, my kids are not super into worksheets. So I'm not super into worksheets, so I'm actually okay with this. When we started CC and my oldest was five, he absolutely loved doing worksheets, workbooks, that kind of stuff. I never intended to really do that with him. And then he 
loved it. And so I printed stuff off from CC Connected and he did them and my three-year-old, he also wanted some, so I printed them for him. Next year, same thing. The year after that was my first year fully homeschooling two kids. So I definitely printed off worksheets so that one could do worksheets while I was working with the other and then we would flip-flop. And that worked for us for a while. And then, But then last year, the boys kind of like started really not wanting to do the worksheets. Like they just were not enjoying it anymore. So around Christmas, we actually just almost completely quit worksheets. We did some of them still in the spring semester, but not nearly to the extent. So we are doing less worksheets this year than we have in the past. However, as I was work planning for this video, I pulled examples of and have links to other worksheets that I really like for various things. So if you do wanna do more worksheets with your kids, I've given you some fun examples. So anyway, um, another thing that is different is we are not doing the worksheets in the folders, pull them out each week, put them in the binder. Because we're doing less worksheets, what I have done is spiral bound their worksheets for the first semester. So um, I just printed out worksheets for the first 12 weeks um, because I don't want to have a situation like last year where I printed off all those worksheets and then after Christmas we quit using them and ended up throwing away a bunch and it felt wasteful. Um, so I will reevaluate over our Christmas break and I'll print the second half of the year um, then. But anyway, so I went ahead and put them in these little spiral binders. I got a ProClick binder this past year, which is not a necessity, but I really do love it. It was a fun splurge. And so I'm able to make these now. Uh, so anyway, kind of rambling on, but I wanted to give you like kind of our background on worksheets. Um, and so, and so instead of printing them and putting them in here, I have printed them and I have already put them in a little notebook thing. Right, so the worksheets that I'm going to share are a combination of worksheets from CC Connected and some from other places like Etsy. Um, I like to pull from both places. I know some people want to use just CC Connected because it's free. It's not actually free. We pay for it in our tuition, but um, it's not an additional subscription like it used to be. So it feels kind of free, even though like you know, it's included in our tuition. We've already paid for it. Anyway, I know some people just want to stick to CC Connected and only print from there. Uh, I know some people don't have access to CC Connected and they can only access things that are like made by people and put them on Etsy or their website or TPT. Um, and so, and then there's people like me who like both. Um, you know, I, I like the free aspect of CC Connected or the fact that it's already paid for, but I also um, have found other resources outside of CC Connected that I like and it's worth the money to me. So I do a little bit of everything. So I'm going to share that um, with you. All right. So let's talk about the ones that I picked for my kids' notebooks. Okay. So you can see this beautiful picture here on the front. There is a set of coloring pages on Etsy drawn by CC Mom that have um, pages for all of the memory work. So there's like timeline and Latin and English. So there's like a page where you can actually write out the memory work. And then she draws one for science and she has one for history. Um, and then there's geography. So for my four-year-old, I printed out all of them. This is hers. She loves to color, and so I printed all of them. For my seven and nine-year-old, they like to color, but only if it's like something they really love, like history, um, science. So I printed some of them for, for my older boys, um, but not everything. So I knew they would not participate in all of them. But it is, if you love to color, or I mean, your kids love to color, but I mean, I'm going to print some for myself too, don't tell. Um, but if, if your kids love to color, this is a great way to, you know, and reinforce the memory work and they can sit and color while you do a read aloud or whatever. I just think they're so beautiful. So those are on Etsy. I'll link them and she actually, the shop owner, the lady that created these, she actually gave me a coupon code to give to you guys. So you can use that to save, I can't remember what the percentage is, but to save on your order. So um, I'll link those. The next thing there are these draw the states. This is found in the sandbox on CC Connected, which I forgot to talk about the sandbox. So on CC Connected, there is a file sharing area where parents can put their um, files that they've created, worksheets, activities, songs, all that kind of stuff. That's what I was talking about earlier, that CC completely wiped it clean last week and took everything down and has been re-uploading it. And that's what messed me up with all the links I'd already pulled and planning this video and all that stuff. 
So anyway, uh, but they are putting things back on there. But they also have what they call the sandbox, which is like a curated um, e-magazine type thing. Like it's like a massive PDF with lots of worksheets and activities, things that CC corporate has decided they feel like is like the best of the best really good materials so they have collected all those on into the sandbox that is in your learning center and then there's the forum with the shared resources where parents can upload additional stuff so if you just want like a super easy button way to find worksheets you can go check out the sandbox personally I don't use the sandbox like I look at it but um, most of it I don't use and so it's a lot to comb through all of it so most of the things are in the sandbox, which is by weeks. So you have to like pull up week one and print like, okay, I just want this page and this page and this page from sandbox week one. And then do the same thing with week two, and week three. You can also find those files all together for weeks one through 24, or in this case, one through 10. So that's what I do. I find them on the file sharing, like the original version that the parent shared that's been all together. And then I print from that. So anyway, all that to say, this is some geography. These are in the sandbox, but there's also a link that has just these files all together, and I'm gonna post that. So this one has like you color each of the states, a color down here, and then match it up there. Um, and that's like the most basic one that all my kids will do. And then she has some more difficult ones. So here's one with the um, capitals, and your child draws the outlines of the state. Here's one with the state and you can label the capitals. Um, you can also same thing, color it, but it does not tell you what they are. And then there's some even progressively harder ones, um, somewhere, some that you can like fill in the capital and the state. I only printed those three for each of my older kids and then just the easiest one for my younger daughter. Um, oh, back to the uh, coloring worksheets on Etsy. They, there's, um, she has a set that's just coloring for anybody. And then there's a set that has some blanks where you can fill in stuff for your older kids who can write. Um, and so for my oldest, I did print some of the ones where you fill it in. Um, but for my others, I just printed the ones that you color. So just so you know, it's kind of, there's some harder ones and there's some easier ones. Okay. And then the last thing that I'll show right now, I'm gonna show something else in a second, but the last thing is this weekly review sheet thing. It's got all of the memory work for the week on one page. It's got a lot of blanks. Your child goes through and fills it in. So I put this in my nine-year-old's um, workbook so that he can practice. He wants to do Memory Master. Um, and so I'm giving him a little bit of extra stuff to work on to help him with that goal. Um, I said last thing, but that was not actually the last thing. The last thing that I wanna show that I printed for them are these presentation plans. Sorry, I'm trying to find the two different. Okay. So these are in the same file. There's just two different options. But these help them to plan out their presentation each week. So my kids, we used these last year. For one of my kids, there's the squares where he can draw stuff. The other one just wanted one to write. And so he can write out their presentation plans. It just kind of helps them think through it ahead of time, put down some points to work on. Um, and then they took these with them to community day and used it kind of as their script. So that worked well for us last year. So we printed those out, added them into their weekly spiral bind, spiral, whatever these are called. And um, they'll just work on that before we go and then tear it out and take it with them. Now, a few more worksheets that I found as I was looking for things that I have opted out of this year for my kids, but I really, I thought were good. Um, there is this copy work worksheet. It's pretty, looks really nice. Um, it's got lines and your child can copy the different uh, memory work, sentences, that kind of thing. Then that same person also made one that has tracing, but with um, multiplication. Uh, it does have multiplication on it, but cursive. So this one's a cursive tracing. This one is just copying and you can do it in, I mean, it's written in print, but you can do it in print or in cursive. So there's both of those. Um, there's another tracing one that looks like this. So a little more for your younger group. There's a coloring page that goes with history here. And they also, I think have science and maybe uh, English or Latin. Um, so, you know, your child can trace that. Um, 
So at this point, my seven and nine year old do not love to write. And so I tried to minimize the amount of writing that they do and instead do like singing and hands-on activities, that kind of stuff. And my four year old is just like very much learning her letters. And so she's not ready for this yet. So I don't have any kids that fit into this range. My kid, like it's kind of in the middle of where my kids are. Um, so I think they're great, but just not something that we're using this year. Um, then there are also some, these science worksheets and also English worksheets. These are made by the same person. These are, I believe in the sandbox, but also as individual files with all the weeks together, which I'll post those. Um, but these take the, uh, memory work and really expand on it. So it's not just memorizing what are the four types of tissues and just learning those four words, but also learning more about the tissues. And they have like a different, like there's week, um, week one, day one, week two, week one, day two. So there's like stuff for, I think four days worth for every week. Same with the English. There's what's an infinitive, which you're going to learn that sentence, but then here it is like applying, fill in the gaps with the infinitive form of these verbs. So definitely these are for older kids. This is taking what we're learning and expanding on it. So depending on if your kids are ready for that, they may, that may or may not be something that you want to use. There's some other ones. There are some math worksheets that have a variety for all ages. I'll post those. There's a timeline cut and paste one. I didn't print out everything to show you, but um, the, the math ones we've used in the past, the timeline one I think we've used in the past, uh, just not choosing to use this year, but they're still good ones. There's some science coloring sheets that, um, you know, you can just print off and your child can color. Um, so there's several good ones. I mean, there's tons of good stuff. Those are just some of my favorites that I picked. Um, as far as non-CC connected worksheets, we also have, there is, and this is, this is a great option if you do not have CC connected. There is a person, well, her name is not Sunshine and Oranges, but her shop name is Sunshine and Oranges, and she creates worksheets that go along with all of the CC work. Um, these are definitely more high level. They have a lot of writing, so this is not going to be like a coloring sheet for a young kid. This is going to be for your older ones that can write, and uh, some of them she kind of expands on them, um, and so if you don't have access to CC Connected or you just don't want to fool with CC Connected, you can go to, or she has a Teachers Pay Teachers store and you can download, which is what I have, or you can just buy, she has them pre-bound on Amazon and you can buy it and send to your house and then there's just 24 weeks or you can, you can buy them as weeks one through 12, you can buy a week 13 through 24 book or you can buy a book that has all 24 weeks but there's 24 weeks of worksheets that your child can do and you don't have to do any printing stapling not stapling printing punching binding sorting any of that stuff so that's like an easy button um but the worksheets are not my favorite just because of all the writing that you have to do and so we are not using those this year, but we have used them in the past, and that is an option. Okay, before we move on, I want to talk about one thing that's kind of a worksheet, kind of not, and that is We Draw to Learn. I've showed this before in past videos, but this is a CC mom who shows you how to draw the different science things that we're learning about. So first week, how to draw four types of tissue. So she shows you step-by-step step how to draw them, and then... She has like an example one, so you can kind of see the example. She also provides just a plain like coloring sheet. So for this is my four-year-old's binder. For my four-year-old, I just printed off the coloring sheet for her to color it. And for my seven and nine-year-olds, we've used this in the past, they will get a piece of paper and they will draw like how to draw natural selection and she has pictures that show you how to do that so they'll be drawing that and my four-year-old will just be coloring them um but I printed this off all the drawing instructions and then printed off like the cover page and laminated it and bound it so it's all together in one and then they can just grab a piece of paper and draw those so it's kind of a worksheet at least for my four-year-old it is because it's in her little binder so I wanted to talk about that before we move on. Okay, now let's talk about my binder. This is one that I made with reference things just for myself. Um, and so what I have in there, first I have, this is a memory re memory work review schedule and this is like a looping schedule. And so it tells you um, 
on week four, on day one, you're gonna review week four, what you're on, and also week three and week one. Um, and on day two, you're gonna review week four and also week two. And that's pretty early on in the semester, so you don't have a lot of variety. But once you're getting to like week 11, it's telling you, okay, review week 11, 10, and, and eight. And the next day, 11, nine, and seven. And the next day, 11, 10, and six. And it goes through and it just breaks it down so that you're continuing to review. This is great if you have a child who is going for memory master. So this is this page is actually in a bundle that comes with some book lists. Um, it's like maybe $4. It's not very expensive and it's worth it to me to have someone tell me exactly what to do to keep that memory work refreshed. Um, so anyway, I don't actually use the book list, but you might find it helpful. Um, so anyway, I'm saying that because when I link it, it says like reading connections or something. You're gonna be like, she linked the wrong thing. No, this is in there. It's just kind of like as an afterthought, a, a side note. Okay, the uh, next thing I have is this has all of the memory work for six weeks at a time. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's really small, but it's all in one place. And there's a page for weeks one through six, and then weeks um, seven through third, uh, 12, and so on. I like this because I just have all the memory work at a glance, and I can sit here and I can ask my kids the memory work. I can also jot down notes. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, I don't like to write in my guide. I think I mentioned that. I don't like to write in my guide because I'm like, kind of weird about that and what if next year we find another song we like better and then I've written this song in here and I find one I like better so I just don't like to write in it but I like to jot notes down because some of the songs I might write to remember like the tune to it or some of the phrasing so that when we get home I remember it so I printed this off last year I used a little, something a little bit different they looked like this and same idea it has all the memory work it has these big boxes to write in and then it has so these are tutor planning sheets. They're actually intended for people who are tutoring to plan out what they're gonna do with their classes. I don't tutor and so um, I just use this for myself and I would make notes, but it was really more space than I needed for the little amounts of notes that I did. So that's why this year I switched to this one that has it all as at a glance. The rest of my little binder is just book lists. This is one from CC Connected that they posted. Um, there's this massive book list and I think it's a video matchup and a book matchup. It's got like a ton. So this is just for myself to try to help me be better about checking books out of the library or buying books. Um, there's another book list. I'll link to all this stuff. Um, anyway, so just so that each week I can look up some books and um, try to match them up. There's like a matchup with the Usborne Science Encyclopedia. So that's what's in my little binder. It's not very big. And honestly, I'm trying to figure how would be the best way to move this digital so I can have these things like on my phone or on an iPad so I don't even have to have this at all. But for right now, I have a hard copy. Um, you might be wondering, what do you use as a planner? Is this your planner? This is not my planner. I use an Erin Condren planner. I have a bunch of videos about this. This is what I've always used. So you can check those out. But I use an Erin Condren teacher planner, although they do now have a homeschool planner. That's new this year. Um, I don't have that yet, but that's what I used to plan everything. That's not the point of this video, but I thought I'd just mention it because if you are watching this and are probably a newer homeschool mom, possibly, you might want to know. Okay, all right, now my favorite part, which is the hands-on activities that I have collected or prepared or whatever. Um, so I mentioned earlier, I'm not huge on worksheets, although we do use them some. Um, I really, what I really like to use is hands-on stuff. Um, and so this is hands-on stuff and also digital resources. Um, I kind of put them all together because the way I planned for this year was I wrote geography, Latin, English, history, math, whatever. I wrote all the subjects and then I tried to plan out things under each subject that would be other things that supplement what we're learning about in CC. So that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So let's start with geography. So here are some supplemental things we're doing for geography. The first are these geography flashcards. These are on CC Connected. I love these. I made these last year for cycle two and they were fantastic. Um, it was so much better for my kids. Yes, we do the map tracing, but that is very much like they would just kind of like trace, 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 trace. They couldn't necessarily tell you which of these five items were which. They just could trace each of them. With this, when I show them this one thing that's circled, they have to tell me which of the mountain ranges is this. Um, and so we practiced these every single day last year and it really, really helped their geography. So this set is for weeks 11 through 24 because weeks one through 10 are the states and the capitals. 
There is a set of these um, that I'll link to that have the states and capitals. You can print them out and cut them and laminate them yourself if you want. But states and capitals, there's like a million sets of flashcards you can buy out there already. And there's like a ton of other resources to learn those. So I personally did not do the, the like the homemade flashcards with those. But you can if that is what works best for you. But I did do the ones that go from weeks 11 through 24 because those are other things in the United States besides states and capitals. So I really love these. So I just keep each week's together and we practice them and then we will, you know, review previous weeks. And so these go in the back of my timeline card container. That's where I store those because I showed you that extra space. So that's one thing we do for geography. Then I'm trying to find a spot to put my stuff down here. Okay. Another thing for geography is I got this book called Draw the USA. So I showed you those worksheets that are from CC Connected that have them tracing you know, the outlines of the states. And then I want to take it a step further, which is teaching them how to draw it from memory because that's something as they progress through CC that they will be doing. So my plan is to use those worksheets that I showed you in our binders that have them tracing the states for the first 10 weeks. And then once we finish that, um, we'll continue with drawing the United States, but I'm going to take it up a step further, at least for my nine-year-old. I don't know about my seven-year-old if that's, I don't, I don't know if he's ready for this, but we're going to give it a try with my nine-year-old. Um, so I got draw the USA. Another thing that goes with the geography slash history is the Our 50 States curriculum. Now, please hear me. You do not have to have a whole separate curriculum for history or for geography. That is absolutely not necessary. However, my kids are history and geography lovers. When we first did CC, that was what they really connected with. So when we did cycle three last time, we did not grasses um, our Star Spangled Story that goes along with history and they loved it. Um, I have a review video of that that you can check out if you're interested. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. This time around, we're doing Not Grasses, Our 50 States. So, the Our Star Spangled Story was kind of more went along with history and the history of the United States. This goes a little bit more with our geography, which is the 50 states. So, we're going to be doing this as a supplemental curriculum for our family just because that's something we love. Not necessary, but something that we're excited about. Um, and then to go along with that, I bought this 50 states cookbook. We love to eat. We love to cook. Um, and so this has like one recipe per state. And I thought that'd be really fun throughout the year as we learn about the states here, this to then cook things that go along with the states. So those are some resources that we're using. Um, and then there are two apps that we're gonna use. We do not do a lot of screens. My kids don't have um, iPads or anything like that. So that is a novelty to get to use an app. And so there's the, I don't know how to pronounce this, Cetera, S-E-T-E-R-R-A app that is free. And then there's a Stack the States app that I think is like $2.99 or something. So I'm planning to get those and let the boys um, play with those and practice their states and their capitals um, because I know just the fact that it's an app is gonna make them excited to to do that. And that'll be another way to help them practice their, their geography. So those are some of our geography resources. Now let's talk about history. I already mentioned our Star Spangled Story. We are not using this this year. We used it three years ago, last time we did cycle three, but I wanted to share it. If you are looking for um, a history supplement, um, this is like a full curriculum. We did not use it as a full curriculum. We, we used it as a read aloud last time and we just read through it. And like I said, my kids love history. That's their favorite subject. Um, so they really enjoyed this. And so we didn't do like the workbook. We didn't, we did some of the activities, but not all of them. So that's just something I wanted to point out. And like I said, I have a video about that if you want to check that out. The other thing for history um, that I made are these little cards. I found these on CC Connected. They are so cute. What do they look like before they're printed out? Oh, cut out. This is what they look like. I printed them out, I laminated them, I cut them, and then I put magnets on the back of them. So what I'm gonna do is scramble them up and give them to the kids and then they can sing the history song and put these on our whiteboard or on the fridge or the you know, dishwasher or something like that and practice the history sentence. And so this is gonna be good not only for my older boys who can read the cards, but also for my daughter who can't read yet, but seeing the pictures as we sing the song, she will be able to put these in the correct order using the picture. So I thought these were really brilliant, whoever put those on CC Connected. So that is fun. I really like that. Um, as far as what else we do for history, 
like I said, my kids are history nuts. We have like a million books about history. We do read alouds that are history related. I'm gonna, uh, this year I wanna do more uh, library books checked out that are picture books that are history related. So that's kind of where we focus for our history is with the library books. Um, my boys really pick up on those history songs pretty quickly. So that's not something that we have to work on a whole lot. So now, oh, but there is one thing, one other resource I wanted to share. It is a hands-on crafts and activities um, set. You can buy it on Etsy and it gives you like a activity for every single week that goes along with the history sentence. I have not personally used them though. I look at them every year and I think, do I wanna get these? I don't know, maybe. Um, I think they'll be really, really fun, especially if you're like a crafty person that you like to do activities. Uh, my two-year-old toddler is, um, into everything and he made last year hard for certain reasons with just getting into everything and going into this year I know that we are not ready to try to like set up a whole play-doh thing or do something with lots of little pieces and crafty things so I'm not doing that this year though it is something that I think is really cool and I know a lot of people use that resource and love it so I'm going to link it you can check it out and see if it's right for your family um, and maybe someday in the future that's something we can get into or maybe we will get it and do it like in the afternoons when dad is off work and can wrangle my little precious toddler love. Okay. Anyway, so science. Talk about science. First of all, last year we've discovered these science videos and absolutely fell in love with them. It's called Awesome Science TV and it's not like Awesome Science TV itself is not a CC uh, product or um, it's not specifically for CC. There's lots of science information on there, but they have playlists for all three cycles of CC that have videos that go with every single week. And they are so well done. They are funny. Like even to me, and yet my kids think they're funny, but sometimes you know, like stuff kids think funny. Adults are like, oh my goodness. No, they're really good. They're really funny well done, but they take the science information and they expand on it. And so the kids beg to watch that every week. That's like the highlight of their week is when they get to watch that video. A lot of times I'll put it on while we're while I'm making lunch and they'll watch it. Um, we love those science videos. So I'm going to put the links. You can check those out. You can choose to subscribe for like a year or do a monthly thing. And there's like a seven day trial period. So you can check it out and see if you like it. Um, anyway, the kids have already been like, I can't wait till school starts back so we can start watching the cycle three videos. Cause I don't let them watch them ahead of time. I want to do it like as we learn each sentence. Um, and so they're really excited about cycle three. Anyway, those are really great. Um, they are biblically, biblically based. And so they always point back to God, which is really good because a lot of times the videos that we find on YouTube are not. Um, and so anyway, I recommend checking those out. It's a really, really great supplement. That is kind of what we use as our main like science supplement outside of CC. And it really takes what we've learned about those few words we learned about in CC and expands on it for the kids. So I really love that. Something else for science that I did this year is, sorry, I have so much stuff here. Okay. I printed out these, um, she calls them toolboxes, but they're just laminated things. Um, from a former CC mom, she, she, they're not in CC anymore, but she makes, she made these when they were. And this takes each of the memory work and it makes these little like Velcro activities. So like you would give your child the blank with the little paint, the little pieces, and then they would match the nose, the larynx, etc. Um, and she has, you know, there's one about the endocrine system and here's different kinds of muscles. Um, and then she gives you the answers, which I've printed on the back. So she recommends printing them and laminating separately. And so she hangs up the one with the answers on her board and then leaves this one for her kids to work on. I printed them front to back like this so they could flip it over and see. But what I love the most about these is for CC, we learn four parts of the lymph system. You just learn these four terms, but then it's up to you to expand on that at home. And I like that her pictures actually show you where these things are located on the body. So you're actually like, you're not just learning brain, nerves, and spinal cord but you're, I mean, most kids know where our brain, brain is from our books, but you know, some of the more obscure ones. So the axial skeleton, six parts of the circulatory system. So I'm really excited about these. Um, I love little hands-on things like this. She also has this one, which is a, a lot more than what we learned in CC, but if you want to expand on that some, you can learn like a lot, um, a lot of other skeleton 
parts. So anyway, I'm excited about those. My four year old's going to love them just because she loves Velcro activities, even though she cannot read. And then for my older boys, it's going to take all these words that we're going to memorize and put it into, okay, where are your lungs? Where is your trachea? That kind of stuff. So that's something else we're doing for science. Um, then the same person that I talked about that does the history hands-on crafts and activities also has a science version. So same idea. If you want some like simple science experiments that use things that you already have at your house, you can purchase that bundle. So I'll link to that. And then there is one other thing. I don't think I printed it off. So I'll just put a picture up on the screen, but they, these were posted in CC connected recently. They are these like Montessori ish flashcards. They're similar to these things that I just showed you. They're, they're very similar to these and they may have been made by the same person. I don't know, but they have the science they have pictures that go along with the science. So if you are not in a place where you don't want to get these, you don't want to pay for them, or you don't want to have to like do the Velcro thing, these other ones are, they're a good idea too. They're not gonna like necessarily help you identify them on the body, but they could be used as a matching game. You could put magnets on them and put them up like I did with the history ones, that kind of thing. So those are cute too. All right, English. Now, there was not anything that I found for English. So I made it myself. I always said, I'm not a worksheet maker. I just find other people's worksheets and share them with you guys. Well, this year I'm a worksheet maker or an activity maker. Okay, so what I made, so 12 weeks out of our 24 weeks, the kids are learning irregular verbs. And it is a lot, it's a lot to memorize. Last time around, we like barely even touched it. This time around, now that my oldest is gonna be in essentials this year, this is something that I want us to work on more. So I created this, um, you give them the blank one and then so they would put, here's what we're working on, to be, and then they would match up the infinitive to be, present, am, are, is, past, was, were, x, and so on. Okay, so you could hang this up on your whiteboard. You could give it to them as an activity. I'm just throwing stuff everywhere. So what I did was I made this one, the white base, and then I made you switch it out every week. So every week you add, so then the next week you add to do and you add each of its different ones there. And it's, um, there's 12 of them. So I have my little baggie here where I have already put them together as to lay and that will go at the top and then I will, and then the kids will match those up. So we will do this each week. And then I created a review one, which is so beautiful if I do say so myself. Just the colors make me happy. Um, so this has all 12 weeks. So to be, there's the infinitive to be, present, past, present participle, past participle. These are all Velcro. So yes, it took a while to print, to cut them and Velcro them. But basically you can hand your, you take all these off, hand your child the blank base of it, and then they can fill those in. You could, you could hang it up and you could fill it in each, like one week at a time as you go through the 12 weeks and watch it build. Um, or once you've gone through the 12 weeks, you can give it to them as a review. So there is that. Um, there's also a neutral version. If you don't want to do the colors, you wanna make it even harder because with the colors, they can kind of match up which ones go together. With the, the white one, they can't. So you could also do this version. Um, or you could just print it out and not do the cutting and the Velcroing, but just print this out and have it to hang on your wall as a reference. So um, I, I created that um, and I did put that in my Etsy shop so that you can get that for yourself if you would like. Um, and then for Latin, same thing. So basically um, this is like we've got, it's a Latin match. So prepositions, I've got a, a column for Latin and a column for English. And so they can match, these are Velcro, match the Latin verb or the Latin preposition with the English preposition. Pronouns, conjunctions, adverbs, verbs, and nouns. And so you could take all of these off and then your child can match them up. So I have these little versions. There's a colorful and a neutral, depending on what you like. And I also made a big version of that for the whiteboard. Now, um, I printed these on paper that is too dark, so it's not gonna look very good. I don't do that. But what I did was I made kind of a bigger version. So you put this on the whiteboard there that says conjunctions and adverbs. Then you have a, a Latin and an English. And then you have all these, they look kind of like flashcards. They're about that size but I printed the Latin on one color and the English on another color. And then the kids can basically, 
you're making this but in a bigger version. I put magnets on the back so it go on the whiteboard. Um, you could also take these and cut them and, um, you know, turn them into flashcards or a matching game on the ground or whatever you want to do. But that was just what I wanted and I felt like there were probably other parents who wanted that too. So um, I will link to that as well in case that's something that you could use for yourself and your kids. After filming that video, I was not happy with how those looked printed on the colorful cardstock. So I made another version of colored ones that match the Velcro activity. So there's actually two options now in the digital download from Etsy. So you can check that out and pick the one you like best. All right. Now math. I don't have a whole lot for math. Um, math is the same every single cycle. So we've kind of done, you know, kind of the same old, same old math stuff but I did get this last year we really liked this is a puppet that's a 25 by 25 so a lot of the stuff that you see is a 10 by 10 like a 100 board type thing um this one is 25 by 25 it's not very expensive I mean 15 by 15 it's 225 it's 15 by 15 anyway it wasn't very expensive but the kids like to pop it as we're singing the skip counting songs it's good you know as my oldest was learning multiplication last year it's a good reference so there's uh this is long. Sorry. Okay, we're almost done. A couple other digital resources. Um, CC Happy Mom is my favorite for geography songs. She does such a good job with the songs and with using her hands to help you learn the location. So um, I created a playlist on my YouTube channel that has all of her uh, songs in order. So they're really easy to find. So I'll link to that. Anyway, whew, I think that's everything. I'm looking at my notes here. Um, yeah, so that's a lot. And like I said at the beginning, you don't have to do all of it, any of it. Just take what works for you and take the links and find what you like, what you enjoy. You know, this is my first year that I've done quite so much of the laminating and the Velcro and all that extra work. Usually I just print a bunch of worksheets and we don't have a whole lot of extra. Um, but as, you know, as my kids grow and change and we repeat a cycle and I'm like not in newborn baby fog and, you know, different phases of life, I'm able to do different things. So this year I'm doing a lot more of the hands-on activities and the matching and creating my own resources and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to do any of that. If it doesn't suit you, read books to your kids if that works for you or watch YouTube videos if that works for you or just do the memory work in the car while you're driving to and from practice if that works for you. So don't, don't stress about it, but just take what you've seen me share here and take what works for you and go for it. So anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I know this is an incredibly long video and I considered breaking it apart this year, but I was like, no, I think people just want one area with all the stuff at once. So thank you for hanging out with me. I hope this was helpful. Give me a heart in the comments or, um, you know, leave a comment, sharing a resource that you love, something like that. Um, but anyway, that is all. Make sure that you subscribe. I share lots of homeschool content, lots of CC content. Um, and so throughout the year, I'll be sharing more stuff. Like I said, next week should be an essentials prep video that I need to start figuring out what I'm going to do for this year for essentials for my oldest. So I'm excited about that. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Have a great time. Have a great cycle three. Have a great year. Talk to you later. Bye.